tell them, say, we are praise cathedral. Church of God in Christ. I don't believe I have a witness, but the Bible says that when praises go up, blessings come down. Oh my brother, 
In the clap with our mouth, giving God praise all over the house, you around the world. Another day leading up to another Thanksgiving, and to God be the glory. What a blessing. By the grace of God, somebody say, I'll make it. Tell somebody, I'll make it. Open your mouth and proclaim it. I'll make it by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you today. Thank you, Lord, for just being right here in the midst of us. We thank you that greater is he that is in your people than he that is in the world today. And God, we pray even now, Lord, for those that are here, not by co coincidence, not by accident, but Lord, I pray even now that you continue to strengthen as only you can. Save that man, that, does, that man, that woman, that boy, that girl that doesn't know you, Lord. Bring them, God, to the point of repentance and, and calling upon 
upon you in the pardon of their sins and that backslider God I pray even now give them the mind to turn back to you in the name of and we thank you edify your people build them up today the devil is horrified and we have the victory we give you praise we give you honor and glory now you show me what is good and what you require of me and that is to do justly to love mercy to walk humbly with you in Jesus name amen come on and praise him where you are you are what a blessing what a blessing amen and want to thank God amen you can't say it enough I want to thank God for our former leaders amen the late Bishop T.D. Iglehart the late Bishop S.C. E. Iglehart even going back to the other children back in the day and to God be the glory happy Thanksgiving to all of you all you that are here in present amen in present and those around the world happy Thanksgiving pre Thanksgiving to you God did not have to allow us to be here on this day, but he did. Give him some praise all over the house. <laughs> Directly to the word of the Lord on today from 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Paul says, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And that includes me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And from that uh, 18th verse, amen, the topic on today is in everything, give thanks. Can you say that with me? In everything, give thanks. As I was visiting Mother Lot on this morning there, Mother Mamie Lot. You can bring it down a little bit, Sam. Uh, Mother Mamie Lot and uh, this morning. And it's, 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 it's one of those things that, but she and I, we discussed giving God thanks in everything. Sometimes easier said than done, but it's still God's word, and he knows exactly amen, how to bring about what needs to be brought about when he speaks it. When we look at today's topic, today's text, amen, to realize this church that Paul founded on his second missionary journey, amen, that Thessalonica, this church that Paul really didn't stay very long at. He, he stayed at this particular church less than one month, less than about three weeks, about three Sabbath days is what it was. And due to persecution and things that had gone on, Paul had to leave that young, flangeling, flangeling congregation. He had to leave them early. He had to leave them somewhat, seemed like they were just almost newborn, little newborn converts. And they wrote Paul back, and uh, they had some questions. When he had sent a man, Timothy, back to talk to them, Paul being in Corinth, at the time, and he came to Corinth with much fear and trembling, amen, in a place that God would have to speak to him about at Corinth and let him know in Acts 18, verses 9 through 11, pray God to, listen, where you are, I told Paul, don't keep silent, keep speaking. He said, I have much people in this city, in Corinth, but Corinth will seem like a tough place to be in that Grecian culture and all that was there. But God, amen, it, it encouraged Paul enough to stay at Corinth about a year and six months, about a year and a half, 18 months. And from there he penned this letter back to finding out what these converts at Thessalonica were going through. Paul penned what we know as the epistle of First and Second Thessalonians is the first epistle that he ever wrote, if you will. But in that, he ended this first letter with a lot of little bullet points. Just like when you say, have sent your children off, amen, possibly to college, and, and they're leaving home for the first time, whether it's college or whether it's military, they're still your child, pray God, and you send them off and you begin to give them little bullet points as they go out the door. You're still saying different things, and don't make it hard on yourself and take them to college and leave them at their dorm and have to drive from the college campus, amen, wishing that you had a room right next to theirs, amen, especially 
especially if it's the last one out or the only one and the empty nest syndrome kicks in. Pray God, you would just like to pay the tuition and find a room right next to them and knowing that they have to move on out and move out further to go. But you give them little bullet points. Uh, pray God, remember, remember this and remember that. Amen. As you try to instill, Paul writes this letter and he begins to wrap up this first piece of it and he says some bullet points. Rejoice evermore. He says, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. When you're getting started in this walk, and many people have been in this walk for some years, and they're still wondering, Lord, what is your will for my life? It's people today that have been, been with the Lord for many years, and, and unfortunately, there are times that after many years of walking to the Lord and some crisis comes into their lives, and you ask them, are you saved? And they say, I hope I am. I hope I am. Where are you going if you, uh, where do you go if you die? I don't know. And they've been with the Lord that you've known for many years. They say, I don't know where I, where I would go if I would die. Well, are you saved? Have you been born again? Uh, 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 have you, have you surrendered? I don't know. Uh, uh, am I talking to anybody here today? Pray God. But, but, but we have to find out that God, amen, he gave them, these are new converts here. These are not people that have been walking with the Lord any amount of time. And, and they had questions. They had questions. They, they had questions like, what's going to happen to my loved ones when they die? And Paul had written to them in this same epistle in the fourth chapter and let them know, pray God, uh, brother and sister, I don't want you to be ignorant, uh, uninformed concerning those which are asleep in the Lord. Pray God, he let them know, pray God, that there was coming a time that Jesus was going to descend out of heaven, amen, and, uh, the, and, and, the, and the trump of God would sound, and, 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 and the dead in Christ would rise first, and we which are alive remain should be caught up together to meet him in the cloud in the air. He was answering some questions that they had. Some had believed that, pray God, I will just um, quit my job and just wait till Jesus comes back. Pray God, I'll just quit my job and I'll just sit here and wait till Jesus come back. Y'all ain't said nothing. Paul had to write this letter to them to let them know that he that doesn't work shouldn't eat. I'm helping somebody. He that doesn't work shouldn't eat, he said. Pray God, he had to help them with their understanding. Then he encouraged them, if you will, again. Out of all the things, he had nothing against them. There was nothing negative about them. They had withstood persecution. Times when, when, when the people from Thessalonica had almost ran Paul out of town, ran him out of town, and had come together and pulled others in to actually run him out of town. Pray God, had threatened in his life and he went down to Berea and down in Berea he said they were more noble than those at Thessalonica amen and that they searched the scriptures to see that those things that Paul preached were so when you look at it pray God listen today we would probably be turned off by Paul we'd probably be turned off by him because if you can picture a weak framed uh, physical a weak physical framed man pray God but may have had some eye problems and all like that and and just to look at him he looked somewhat weak is what it was and to think about that he's traveling from place to place and at some point he is a tent maker he's a tent maker and and and, and with uh, with tents Amen. He would not only it would be reflected in his writings when he would say, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He sent a straight cut. Amen. Speaking of a tent maker, he knew something about a straight cut if you will. Not only that, but if you would think about it, amen, making tents, he would probably have a lot of scrap, what we would call scraps left over. Amen. If you've ever, amen, enjoyed your grandmother's quilting, amen, and she would take all the various, amen, scraps and all the various cloths that are around there and, and, and make that quilt, that homemade quilt that would help you through the winter, the cold months, and all these kind of things. But she had maybe uh, a, a trunk, 
amen, well, you say a treasure chest or a trunk, and maybe she kept some of her scraps in the treasure chest, and she would take that, amen, from time to time and make another quilt out of it. No doubt Paul had a lot of pieces left over from different jobs that he had when he had worked with, with uh, uh, Priscilla and Aquila as tent makers. No doubt he'd have scraps, so he needed someone to help to move his stuff when he moved from place to place. Can you imagine Paul saying, Pray God, I'm going to preach around the world. And they looked at him, and he would get on his donkey, and he said, I'm going around the world, and he's on, he's on a donkey. But using a donkey and ships and all like that, he logged in nearly 3,000 miles, amen, as a gospel globetrotter around the world. He had to remind some people, pray God, don't look on the physical. He said, though we war in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. Pray God, he said, pray God, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, the casting down of imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Because they said, listen, he, he sounds so strong in his letters, but when he shows up, he's this little weak, uh, little, uh, weak figure that you see. But Paul let him know, don't get it twisted, pray God. Listen, that, that he actually had persecution in Thessalonica. He'd been shipwrecked, pray God. He'd been less out on sea, pray God. He'd been out there. He'd fasted days and nights on. Pray God, he'd been stoned and left to die. He had received, amen, 39 shipwrecks stripes at the hand of, of Roman soldiers and all these kind of things. He'd been persecuted. He paid his dues, pray God. He, need to, he, he let them know he is an apostle. He is a leader of God. Amen. He founded churches. He went through some birth pains to found churches. The first church on European soil there, pray God, there in Philippi, he founded that church. But from Philippi being jailed and, and fixed in stock his hand, his hands and his feet in stocks, pray God. He gave God praise. He gave God thanksgiving. Pray God. He and Silas, amen, they sung and prayed and they gave God the glory way back in a jail. Pray God where you could hear it echo up through uh, the jail, if you will, way over in the night uh, after they've been beaten. Uh, one is praying uh, and the other one is singing. Uh, it sounds like a little testimony service that's going on, but God heard their cry. He heard their praises. He heard their adoration. He heard their thanksgiving. He, in other words, he demonstrated a life that in everything uh, give thanks, pray God. And while they praised God uh, and sang and, 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 and prayed, God sent an earthquake and busted the jail open there, Philippi. Pray God, it wasn't about Paul. It wasn't about Silas. But when he busted the jail open, it was a jailer, Philippian jailer, that was about to fall on his sword and Paul said do man do thyself no harm he said what shall I do to be saved he said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your whole household shall be saved it wasn't about Paul it wasn't about Silas but it's about a Philippian jailer and his household getting saved it's about souls that need to be brought to the Lord but in Paul's life it was an epitome in everything give thanks but uh, this is the will uh, of God uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, when's the last time uh, you gave him thanks uh, when circumstances were bad uh, or were you down in the mouth uh, with complaining? Uh, pray God talking about what you don't have. Uh, but out after when you do look at what you do have, have you given God thanks? Uh, it may be just a little food on your plate, uh, but you gave God thanks uh, through prayer and thanksgiving. Uh, said, Lord, uh, I want to thank you for this on my plate. And when you begin to thank God, he has a way of multiplying. He has a way of adding to what we have. Come on and give him thanks all over the house. He left and wrote back to them this exhortation. Rejoice evermore. When's the last time you rejoiced over someone talking about you? When's the last time you rejoiced over it rather than saying, I'm going to get even? 
When's the last time you rejoiced over it rather than going on Facebook? When's the last time you rejoiced over it rather than sending a text to, amen, those, those close little allies, uh, partners in crime, pray God, to, to, to talk about what they said about you? When's the last time, pray God, when they called you something that wasn't of the Lord and accused you of something that wasn't of the Lord, but you were doing the Lord's business? And when the word would say rejoice and be exceeding glad, he said great is your reward in in heaven. We many times will do the opposite of that. Get down, pray God, down in our spirits, down in our countenance, and all these kind of things. Rather than giving God the praise, rather than giving him thanks, pray God. When's the last time you had a trial uh, and you gave God thanks in the trial? When's the last time you had a test, uh, but you gave God thanksgiving and praise and adoration in the test? Let me ask you right now, did he turn it around? Uh, let me ask you right now, Will he turn it around? When will he do it? Somebody say every time. When you give God thanks, he will take care of you, pray God. In everything, give him thanks. Holly, this is the will of God. This is the will of God. Pray God, go on and rejoice. It doesn't mean I'm happy about it. Pray God, joy doesn't mean I'm happy, happy, happy. Happiness, happiness is based on happenings. When there's good happening, y'all know what I'm talking about. Pray God, a direct deposit just hit your bank. You said, Lord, I thank you. I'm happy. I'm happy every month I do, I almost do it there. Every month when direct deposit hit from a retirement check, pray God, I just get happy, all oh Lord. <laughs> happiness is based on happenings. Am I here? You just, it, it, listen, before they gave you the certificate, it came across your, your co computer that you've been promoted. You've been teleworking, but it came across, you just been promoted with a raise. You happy. You do your happy dance, y'all, and buy a happy meal and all this kind of stuff. Happiness is based on happening. But when the chips are down and things are not in your favor and things are against you, amen, it's the joy of the Lord that is your strength, pray God. It's a, it's a fruit of the spirit. It's a, it's a spiritual force. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, it's peace, it's joy in the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody the joy of the Lord is my strength. When I begin to lift God up, when I begin to praise him, God gets happy about it. He begin to move in on my situation. When the last time you gave God the glory and gave him the praise, weeping may endure for a night. But somebody said, but joy comes in the morning. I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. We have to cry sometime, but that's all right. I know that Jesus, he'll fix it. Come on and praise him. In everything, in Ephesians 5 and at Ephesians 5 and 20, he says, giving thanks always for all things, for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, well, he said uh, in everything, but he didn't say for everything. Paul just stated there in Ephesians 5 and 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, God will take care of you. When we think about Thanksgiving, amen, leading up to this commemoration of this day, every day should be a day of thanksgiving. Come on, I said every day should be a day of thanksgiving. When we slept last night, when we slept much throughout the night, and you wake up and God has made a brand new day for you. He's created a brand new day for you with a 24-hour opportunity to praise him, 24-hour opportunity, amen, to do good, a 24-hour opportunity to live for him. Thanksgiving, the importance of spiritual benefits of thanksgiving in our prayer life cannot be overly emphasized. Amen. The Bible tells us God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble in James 4 and 6. But the question is, how do you become humble? It's done by being thankful, being thankful. A good rule is to be careful or worried for nothing. In Philippians 4 and 6, he talks about be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything. He said in everything through prayer and supplication with 
thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus our Lord. And then Paul said, finally, brethren, he said, whatsoever things are true, he said, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any power, if there be any praise, he said, think on these things. When the last time you begin to think on him, pray God, and when you begin to think on him, you begin to thank him. When you begin to reflect on him, when you begin to think about where God had brought you from, when you begin to think on where God, what God had brought you out of, it's hard to think on him without thanking him. Give him praise right down through there, pray God. What a blessing. When we look there, he said, uh, listen, as we look at it, uh, he tells us to be prayerful in all things. Be prayerful, thankful, and prayerful in all things. Be thankful for everything, in everything. Amen. Listen, it's the sin of not glorifying God, not glorifying God and thankfulness uh, that caused the ancient world to plunge into the terrible depths of sexual depravity. Amen. In Romans 1 and 21, they would not glorify God in whom he is, neither would they be thankful in all. And they plunged into sexual depravity. Romans 1, 21, read that sometime. Pray God, read it. Amen. To see where God talks about a reprobate mind. Part of that, amen, thing with that was unthankfulness. We're in the last day. Somebody said the last day. We're in the last day. We're in peerless time. Pray God, when men Men are unthankful, unholy. When's the last time you gave him thanks? Sometimes people just drive to work and, 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 and listen, and some people hate their jobs. They hate their jobs. They hate their co-workers. They hate their supervisors. They hate their subordinates. And they've been doing it for years. They hate the job. And they get up like a robot and drive to work just looking straight ahead about to hit everything. They never think to look up and just thank God, y'all understand that? Just thank God. You begin to thank God. If nothing else, he, he, may, he, give you, he, may, he may give you a promotion or give you a lateral somewhere else if you begin to thank him. But just go up there each day and slump down the hallways and slump around the water cooler and you just hate it. Oh, Lord. Don't you know God has you there by purpose? Don't you know God gave you that job if you didn't hook and crook to get it? If you wrote the right resume and didn't go to AI and get you a resume, don't you know God gave you that job? If you didn't sit up and lie on the resume and cut and paste something that doesn't belong to you, pray God, God gave you that job. Hmm? You didn't go to some KSA and cut and paste and put it right over there and then didn't take out all the pronouns and all this kind of stuff. You got to fix it for who you are. Y'all don't say nothing if you go do all that. <laughs> but then get in it and then hate it. Now, who wants to live like that? You're there not by coincidence. You're there not by accident, but you're on assignment. You're on assignment. God has you there for his purpose. It may be the secretary. It may be the custodian. It may be the FedEx man or the, or the, the people that are delivering. The, it may be the mailroom clerk, whatever, it is, but you're on assignment. And when we realize we're on assignment, you can wake up every day because God has something fresh. You don't know who it is and where it is, pray God, but God has something. When you're on assignment, pray God, days will go by. You have purpose. You have a reason to get up. And when the assignment is over, you may not be ready to get off the job, but God may have to tell you then exit. He may have to tell you to move because the assignment is up here. And the last 10 or 15 years of a 36-year career, the last 10 or 15 years, uh, Deacon Ford, I realized he, he gave me the revelation I was on assignment. I was that late in my career before I realized I was on assignment. And, and, it, and I could get up in the morning. 
I could go out that, that day. I'm not crazy. You know, it's still a way to carry yourself. But yet and still, the Lord gave me freshness to get up and go to the job. And he would show me doors that were open. Break out when you were working with attorneys and you're working with bankers and you're working with CPAs and all like that. But God would give you the wisdom how to go in and out. And it was problems that were out there. There were things that you encounter with. And pray God would open doors behind the scenes to be able to minister to the presidents of banks and CEOs and CPAs and attorneys and all that. He opened the door when you realize God had you there. He opened the door for all that reason. Hallelujah. When you're sitting there working with Cecilia Abbott on things that would benefit everybody, you understand? Benefit everybody across the aisle. When you're working with different ones, he had you on assignment. On assignment. And it just gave you a different attitude, a different outlook. And in with that, once I became, began to realize the purpose in what I was doing and that I was on assignment, Thanksgiving was automatically part of it. It was part of it. Lord, I thank you for another day. It was easier to get up and get out there. Praise God. And I thank God, hallelujah, for three, for 36 years, three months and five days, y'all ain't said nothing, till he said exit and the assignment was up. Praise God, you got to move on. I called Bishop Iglehart and said, well, today is my last day. He said, that's good, my boy. But I said, that's all right. I can now go on further in the ministry where God is calling because the assignment is up here. How many want to thank God for the assignment he has? has you on. Pray God. God never works by coincidence. Pray God. You ought to give him thanks for the assignment you own. You ought to give him thanks for the lives you're able to impact for his glory. Pray God. Give him thanks uh, in everything. Uh, give him thanks today, Lord. Hallelujah. And we heard it in our opening scriptures a while ago and in Psalms 100 where he talks about, amen, uh, uh, giving God the thanks giving him the praise. So how many know he's worthy today? He's worthy, amen, and worthy to be praised. Oh, give thanks, Psalms 118. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy, amen, endured forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endured forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endured forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endured forever. Give thanks unto the Lord in everything. As I come to close, let me hit about three more things here. Amen. Listen, as they went across the Sea of Galilee, as they went across the Sea of Galilee, the evening time when uh, you relax in the evening. Some are saying here at Praise Cathedral, 5895 Ben Zingerman Road, after this message, I'm going home to relax. This afternoon, I will relax. And there are others that's going to run wild, run buck wild this afternoon because they got time on their hands. Tell the truth, shame the devil. But some are saying, when I go home, I'm going to relax. And while they were relaxed in the evening time, a storm arose. A storm arose. And they wondered, Master, do you care? If this storm has arisen, I don't believe they said it like that, but you understand. Yes. Jesus is down there sleeping on a pillar. The boat is taking on water. In the midst of the storm, Jesus stands up and says, Peace, be still. There's such a great calm. Has anybody given him thanks when he brought you through a storm? Has anybody had a storm in your life as you can think that it was God that brought you through that storm and brought peace in that storm? Thanksgiving, when you've been through some things, when he got to the other side, and there's legion over there. He said, what is your name? He said, my name is legion for we are many. And Jesus, why did you come to torment us before our time? The man sounded like he was talking trash, but he had some help. He had a whole lot of help living on the inside. Had a whole lot of demons living on the inside. He had some help saying, we are many. 
And Jesus said, come out of the man. Pray God, the demon spoke up in him and said, there's some swine, there's some hogs over there. Can we go over in those hogs? And Jesus said, go. And when, uh, listen, he cast the devils out of this man. I want to let you know this man, pray God, listen, the enemy had him suffering from mental illness. The enemy had him not in his right mind. This man, pray God, the enemy had him cutting himself. I said, this man, uh, the enemy had him where he was streaking and running around in his birthday suit. I said, this man, uh, he lived in, uh, the, in the cemetery. He lived in the graveyard, and he's running around in his birthday suit, living in tombs and all this kind of stuff. This man, pray God, when the, when the police would try to chain him, when they put cuffs on him, he break the cuffs, pray God. In today's vernacular, uh, I mean, when even when they tase him, pray God, the taser wouldn't work. Uh, no matter when they bound him up, uh, he just break the chain. I said, this man uh, who Jesus cast the devils out when he said, my name is Legion, uh, for we are many. Uh, it's a Roman a Roman foot soldier unit, about three to 6,000 soldiers. In other words, he had three to 6,000 demons uh, on the inside that had him cutting himself, that had him out of his right mind, uh, that had him in his birth suit, uh, that had him living in the graveyard, uh, that had him breaking chains, uh, that had him talking all out of school. Uh, but when the devil was cast out, uh, he didn't mind putting his clothes on, uh, and he sat down uh, and in his right mind, uh, and he wanted to follow Jesus. Uh, if God has ever brought you out of anything uh, and gave you your mind back, you ought to give him thanks. Uh, come on and praise him. <laughs> I really didn't read uh, where he had uh, an appointment with a psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist is all right if you need one. I didn't read where he had an appointment with a psychologist. Uh, and they're all right if you need one. But I tell you, nobody, I said absolutely, nobody comes secondary to Jesus. Come on, son. I said nobody uh, comes secondary to Jesus. Because uh, if it's a good psychiatrist, they're calling on him. Uh, if it's a good psychologist, uh, they're calling on him. Uh, they saying, Lord, I need your wisdom uh, to diagnose this problem. Uh, but Jesus, uh, when he cast the devil out uh, and put him back in his right mind, you ought to praise him. Uh, we, before we were saved, uh, we wasn't in our right mind. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, when the Lord saved us, uh, he gave us power. He gave us love uh, and a sound mind. Praise him. Hey, when they thought you had a nervous breakdown, when they thought they're going to have to lock you up, when they thought you had to put you in a straitjacket, but God uh, flipped the script uh, and put your mind back like it needed to be, you ought to praise him uh, and give him thanks uh, and don't walk around uh, like it didn't happen, but give God the glory and give him the praise. Yes, he went across the Sea of Galilee. He got over the legions, and God worked a miracle. Jesus cast the devil out. The man wanted to go with him, and Jesus said, just go back to the, those, the capitalists, those ten cities, and tell them how the Lord had compassion on you. Come on and praise him. He'll give you power. He'll keep you uh, in perfect peace. Uh, it's a promise from God. Uh, whose mind uh, is stayed on thee? Because uh, they trust in him. Uh, I said God promised it. Uh, God never promised a thing uh, that he cannot do. Uh, you ought to thank God. Uh, say, I thank you for power. I thank you for love uh, and a sound mind. Give him praise. Came back across the Sea of Galilee and a woman who shouldn't have been in public, uh, a woman uh, hallelujah, they were considered unclean pray God, but she said if I can but touch uh, the hem of his garment, uh, I believe uh, that I will be made whole uh, she went out in the crowd uh, it, wasn't in, it wasn't easy she'd been to all the doctors, uh, the best of specialists, uh, the practitioners and all the others, uh, she'd been to the best of them, uh, pray God, but she only grew worse uh, and ran out of money. Uh, but she heard 
heard uh, that Jesus was in town. Uh, if I can just get to Jesus, uh, if I can but touch uh, the hem of his garment, uh, I shall be made whole. Uh, she made her way uh, through the crowd, uh, and she touched uh, the hem of his garment. Uh, yes, Jesus stopped. Uh, yes, Lord, uh, on his way down to Jairus' house, because Jairus told him his daughter was sick. Uh, and Lord, if you just come to my house, uh, if you lay hands on her, she shall be healed. Uh, and Jesus said, that's all right. Uh, he's going on to Jairus' house. Uh, but when the woman touched him, uh, he stopped uh, with a crowd all around him. Uh, said, who touched me? Uh, and his disciple looked at him and uh, said, Master, uh, what's wrong with you? Uh, I said, many people uh, are thronging you. Uh, and you say, who touched me? Uh, but Jesus said, somebody. Uh, he said, virtue uh, went out of my body. Uh, power uh, went out of my body. Uh, somebody got healed. Uh, when he turned around, uh, the woman was there. Uh, she gave her testimony. For 12 long years, uh, I've had a blood problem. Uh, for 12 long years, uh, I had something like cancer. Uh, 12 long years, uh, pray God, it wouldn't stop. Uh, but when I touched uh, the hem of your garment, uh, pray God, the blood stopped immediately and I felt within my body that I am healed. Uh, she said, woman, thy faith uh, had made thee whole. If God ever healed your body, uh, you ought to give him praise right now. You ought to thank him. For the short memory we have, hallelujah, listen, and Jairus turned and came to Jesus right about that time, said, leave the master no long. She, 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 she's over. It's over. It's over. Trouble the master. Jesus turned, turned around and looked at him. He said, fear not, only believe. He, he's, he's, he's in his zone now. He's in his zone. Pray God. And hear this. He kept on moving down Jairus. And he had some people down there, that those paid, paid uh, mourners, paid you good money to come and cry. Excuse me, an act of fool. Paid you good money at professional mourners to come and cry and keep up a bunch of noise. Je now, just take it from Jesus' standpoint, he put them out. Now, we get upset and folk put folks out crying and cutting up around us. Because we kind of like it. They paid them to be there. You understand? And Jesus put them all out because he said, the girl is just, she's just sleep. And they laughed him to scorn. He put them all out, took Peter, James, and John, Jairus and his wife with him, and went into that little girl and said, Talitha Kuma, daughter, I say unto thee, arise, wake up, baby, wake up, pray God, and give us something. Twelve years old, I said, God raised, if you know anybody that God raised from the dead, you ought to give him praise, right? You know anybody that flatlined, you know anybody, pray God, that coated blue, pray, you ought to give God praise and say, Lord, it was nobody but you. Glory to God. When we got the word, our former pastor, pray God, coded blue one day. But God, well, God raised him up. When Marilyn walked around the corner and saw the light on at the room, and he coded blue, but God raised him up uh, and gave him a few more years. And if you ought to praise him, it could have been you uh, on that table. But you ought to give God praise. How I many know he got power uh, over nature? Amen. I mean, to make the storm cease. Uh, he got power uh, over demons. Uh, Holly to deliver legion. Uh, he got power over sickness and disease uh, to raise that woman up and stop the bloody flux. Uh, he got power over sickness and, de and, and death. Uh, he got power over death. Uh, pray God to raise up Jairus' daughter. He's ever done anything for you. Uh, he's ever done anything for your family member. Ever done anything for your child. Uh, I said you ought to give him praise uh, and thank him. Uh, Lord, I'm thankful. Uh, it's not just about Thanksgiving. Uh, some commemoration. Uh, but Lord, I want to thank you where you brought me from. Uh, I want to thank you how you gave me my mind back. I want to thank you how you brought me through the storm. Uh, I want to thank you how you delivered me one day. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for healing sickness and disease in my body. I want to thank you for raising my family member back from the death's door. I want to thank Give him praise all over the house if that's you today. Stand to your feet. In everything, rejoice evermore. Now, you can play with this thing, but if God has really ever done anything for you, if it was no more than got you through that college, 
that college degree. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When money was funny, no money to be funny. It was funny you didn't have no money. And wasn't no change to be strange. I got a picture right now. I, I, I was so hungry. I wasn't hungry. I was hungry. Hungry. And this little picture, a man with praying hands over some bread. That bread looked so good. It was one of them little catalogs where they sold little pictures. That little picture just about that big. I looked so at bread. I was so, so hungry. I said, bread looks so good. I prayed in college. And I told you, when you climb Fool's Hill, you climb Fool's Hill. Even if I had a Pell Grant, it was, it was for education. It wasn't for, you understand what I'm saying? It wasn't for drinking stuff. You don't need to be drinking and, 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 and electric sliding and everything and all like that. It was to go to school on. You hear me? But if you're going to use it for all that other foolishness, yeah, you're going to wound up like that. And uh, cause my mother had already filled out my paperwork. And the people told me in the registrar's office, in other words, you don't have to lie. Nobody can live off of that. You, you, those figures. You know, my mother was meticulous. She wanted to make sure she dotted every I, crossed every T to say what the income was. And it was, wasn't enough for anybody to live off of. But that's what I turned in on my Pell Grant. I'm simply hungry. And the Lord opened another door. It, now listen, you know, it's hard to enjoy a meal if you've never been hungry. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And today I, in my home in Temple, I got, a, I got me a larger size picture of that picture that I saw in college. It took me all the way back 40 some years ago. But how many know God will provide? How many know that God will take care? He'll, he'll take care of me. Hmm? See, sometimes we get, we, get, we get to whatever to realize you had to put some sugar and some water to make you some syrup. Y'all ain't saying that. All that kind of stuff. Sometimes we forget about some of these things. We forget about the only thing you didn't check off was the oink from the hog. Y'all ain't saying because you ate every other piece of it. Everything but the oink. If you could have ate the oink, you'd have ate the oink. Y'all ain't saying that. You forget about driving that car with the floorboard out and telling the children to stay away from that hole right there because you don't want to lose a child falling through the floorboard of the car while you're driving. <laughs> Come on here, somebody. We just forget about this stuff. We forget about that, that we see children walking around with, like it's in style with the, with, the, with the knees tore out, but you had your stuff tore out not trying to be cool. And just to try to be presentable, but they ran out of patches. So it wasn't a patch to put on it. And, 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 and she didn't have time enough to sew a patch. And didn't have time enough to iron on patch. So you had to go like that anyway. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Well, now, we just get to where we act like we forgot about all this stuff. You act like you forget about to know when the, you didn't look out the window to know the sun was up. You look through your roof. Say, okay, the sun is up. Somebody say, but God. But God. but God. You ought to give him thanks all over the house. Give him thanks. <laughs> Nobody should have to tell you to give God thanks when you just look back and think on. Are you hearing me? That God has been so faithful. He's been so faithful. Y'all excuse me for a minute. I'll make a shout out to one of my brothers, Leonard, Leonard Ray Rose graduated high school and had nine children behind him ages nine ages two to sixteen that's what he graduated high school with nine children behind him ages two to sixteen i was one of them i was number eight out of ten living and to go to the air force and re-enlist in the air force and send his whole re-enlistment check back home to help those coming behind him somebody ought to give god praise right down through that i'm just talking about myself and we don't have from now to Thursday to, give, to, to, to think on what God has brought us through. But if he's done anything for you, you ought to give him thanks every, every day. Pray God. Some things some of you have been through, and, and by radio, by television, by, by stream, some things you've been through, you ought to be walking around 24-7 24, 24 with a prayer shawl wrapped around your, around your shoulders just giving God thanks. A, tra a, prayer, a prayer shawl just 24-7, just thanking God. Lord, you brought me through. You brought me through. Am, am, am I here? Yeah. To God be the glory. Somebody say, to God be the glory. Give God thanks. 
that he sent his darling son to shed his blood. Come on here. Some of us know the only way we're, we're living today is because he brought us in. He brought us in just in time. He saved us just in time. We wasn't fit to live and wasn't ready to die, but he saved us just in time. And some of our marriages, that's the only way our marriages are still together because he saved us just in time. Just in time. Because you're about to make a wrong move at a wrong time and tear up literally everything. But God saved us just in time. Somebody give God praise for the blood of Jesus Christ from now. Father, we thank you for this time together this morning in everything to give thanks. And Lord, you didn't raise us up to go in the opposite direction from you, Lord, when we learned just enough to be dangerous, Lord. But you gave us enough to continue to follow, follow on with you, Lord. That if we continue in your word, then are we your disciples indeed. And we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Lord, I thank you today for what you've done, how you've saved so many, brought so many of us out, Lord. We thank you today. And we help, thank you for helping us to grow in grace, filled us with the Holy Ghost, and gave us power to stand and to move and to be an effective witness unto you, Lord. We want to say thank you. We dare not take this so great a salvation for granted, Lord, because you really didn't have to bring us out. You really didn't didn't have to give us power and love and a sound mind but you did Lord you really didn't have to bring us through the storm but you did and we thank you for it and we give you praise you didn't have to heal our bodies but Lord you did and we thank you for it you took your big eraser and whatever the MRI was saying whatever the x-ray was saying you took your big eraser and erased it Hallelujah, off our brain, off our heart, off our whatever. You did it, Lord. And we say thank you today in Jesus' name. Now, if that's you today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sins, I want to let you know God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Pray God. Gain doesn't mean godliness, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Pray God. But I want to let you know God loves you unconditionally. If you'd have been the only person left on this earth, I believe, I believe that Jesus would have died just for you. Just for you. I'm going to, if you want to, I'm going to pray this prayer with you on today where you can surrender your life to him, give your life over in exchange for eternal life that he has in store just for you. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am, a sinner who's come short of your glory. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that, Lord, you raised, that God, you raised him from the dead, and he's alive right now, and he's coming back again. I repent of my sins, ask you to forgive me for my sins, and Lord Jesus, come into my life. I receive you by faith, and I thank you for saving me and being my Savior and my Lord from this day forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and praise him. Praise him right where you are. It's the best thing that ever happened to you. It's the best thing that could ever happen to you. The day that you were born again, surrendered your, surrendered your life to the, our, our Lord and Savior. You give him thanks just for that right there. And I pray, Father, that you will fill them with the Holy Ghost, fill them with power. God, fill them. You said we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon us. And we shall be witnesses unto you. I believe you today to fill them the, up out of their belly will flow um, joy and peace and love and all these things that only you can do, Lord. I thank you for doing 
doing it, then we call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and praise him all over one more time. To God be the glory. I encourage you, find your good church home uh, even before Thanksgiving Day on, on, on Thursday because this is the day of Thanksgiving for you. Amen. Find your good church home. If you don't have one that you're aware of, look on that on our uh, screen there, www.kojic.org, C-O-G-I-C.org, one of the churches that we have. But go there and tell that pastor, you've given your life to the Lord and hook up in that, in that ministry. Our prayer is that God will bless you to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you're in San Antonio or surrounding areas of San Antonio, Texas, look no further than Praise Cathedral Church of God in Christ, 5895 Ben Zingerman Road, right here in San Antonio, Texas, where we say, come go with us, and we will do you good. Otherwise, go with God, and he will go with you. God bless you.
and tell them, say, we are Praise Cathedral, Church of God in Christ. I don't believe I have a witness, but the Bible says that when praises go up, blessings come down. 